Alright. Hi everybody, this is Z from Z Design. Uh, welcome to my channel. This is my first video. Uh, I just want to show how you can create uh, this kind of flowing and uh, art directable ribbon or, um, well, whatever you call it. It's kind of like a flow ribbon thing uh, that you can create with very, uh, very little setup and it can be very art directable and uh, yeah let's let's see how I created this so uh, I'm using Cinema 4D R21 with Octane and um, my scene setup is pretty clear this is uh, I just say uh, a very easy uh, cube uh, I give it some uh, fill in and also give it a l bunch of sub segments and then yes I have subdivision surface on just so uh, I can have a smoother look to it and uh, don't worry about the volume builder and measure um, we'll talk about it soon uh, yeah let's see how I set this up alright so what you want to do is first um, actually draw a curve that you want it to <coughs> that you want your uh, flow to be so I'm just gonna keep it uh, very simple and uh, somewhat like the one I did in the example mm. yeah probably like that and uh, be sure to give it some depth just so that it's more interesting Oh, and uh, keep an eye on your uh, camera angle just so you can uh, control the full shape you have <coughs> so if you have a designer and uh, he or she hand you a file in Illustrator you can uh, take that spline in and then just uh, start smithing with it uh, but if you want to create it by yourself then um, well just do whatever you want and let's say I'm happy with this which I am actually not but let's uh, for the time's sake just say that um, I'm done with it and I want to have a cube or um, a ribbon like thing wrapped on the spline uh, I'll first need let's say a cube uh, adjust the height or whatever actually let me put it this way and then I don't have a very thin ribbon and have um, yeah about that thick that's too thin actually 250 mm, looks okay and then the thickness would be you know five sounds reasonable uh, I will oh not give it Philip this time uh, so what you want to do is, oops, very simple, just uh, have a spline wrap and if you hold shift while you uh, lose your mouth then it would just be uh, as a child of the object that you selected. Uh, and in this spline wrap just put the spline in the spline uh, selection and then you can see this is very weird. Uh, that's because we don't have any segments there so let's say this is the longest um, side and I want to have um, let's say 512 this much segments and now I can see it, it it is curving along the spline it looks super ugly now but it's okay we're, we're gonna fix it well first let's add just a few segments uh, to maybe too much just a few segments, say, um, I don't know, six. Yep, okay. And uh, give it a fillet. And uh, you know what? This way too thick for my taste. Alright, that's it. Uh, I actually want to have more segments, so I'm just going to keep it the highest you can get, which is a thousand. And you cannot go higher than that. Cinema 4D won't allow it. 
and let's say this is what we want now oh um, and one more thing if you have it very weird it's probably because of the axis as well if you get something weird then just play with the axis and you get it uh, basically what we are now is a good starting place we can have um, manipulation on it in basically two ways you can have it in the spline wrap uh, see here in the object tab you have rotation and size and if you play with that you can see that is pretty beautiful curve man manipulation right there and this is very elegant and all but it's not as um, clear as what I'm going to show you so um, the strength of this method is that uh, you don't have well uh, the some typical points is that you don't have a very visual way of um, if, say if you want to want it to be uh, very thin and rotate just right here at the corner you kind of have to guess where it is right so that's not really responsible that's not I mean sorry that's not really um, a an efficient way to do this but let me just reset it oops all right <coughs> so the second way I'm gonna show you is just use cinema 40s built-in um, deformers you can have let's say a uh, twist or bulge uh, to make it bigger or smaller or to twist it these two are the uh, most frequent thing that I use so if you have a bulge uh, deformer first change the size let's say 500 and actually uh, be, be sure that this whatever deformer you have is above the spline wrap so that w uh, what it means is that it will make it will deform the object first well actually let me just put it into the right position and change the size so that uh, you don't get confused Yep, and so this just means that you're gonna have to uh, manipulate or deform the object first and then wrap this along the spline and you can see this is the part where we deform our objects and this is fine but if you have it below the spline wrap then weird shit's gonna happen like this so w basically why this is happening is because you are uh, wrapping this spline uh, wrapping this object to the spline first and then applying a bulge here so that's not what we want see it's weird so uh, just be sure that your uh, wh whatever you want to do to the object do it before it was wrapped um, alright so here we can basically start to build this uh, object or shape it uh, however we want and just keep in mind sometimes you're gonna bump into this there are several ways we can fix it first um, if it's okay just shrink the size if you shrink it enough this won't be a problem but if you can't shrink the size then I would suggest you uh, let's say if this is um, we have before and this is definitely gonna show in the render and what we can do is that put this inside a volume builder and then a volume mesher <coughs> and yes the, uh, depending on the voxel size you're gonna have this kind of stuff showing around don't worry uh, just change the voxel size to a smaller number and uh, be sure to do it uh, with care because it can mess up your computer uh, because it requires yeah you see it requires a lot of computational um, strength or power so um, if you have a good computer then congrats if you don't then uh, just do it carefully you'll be fine and have a smooth uh, I, I don't know what they call it just basically add a smooth layer and uh, give it a bunch of smooth iterations 
it was smoothed out in the end just like that and uh, if you want to have lower poly count then just change the adaptive but I find it to be kind of buggy when uh, when you're rendering it so um, just be careful and then if, if something happens like like um, the the splat or the object is um, basically not showing up in some part and showing up uh, just change the and uh, just tweak the range threshold um, this is basically uh, giving it a thicker outline so that you can have more uh, shown in the actual render or uh, on the geometry so yeah just play around with that and uh, yeah if you if you will like you can add more twist or bulge or whatever you want I'm just gonna fast pass this oh and while you're working um, be sure that you can uh, turn off the builder and masher to see what you get without uh, having to let your computer uh, calculate again and again and again And one more thing, uh, don't forget that you can always uh, use more deformer, like this uh, FFD deformer. Basically what it does is that um, it can change your object without having to make it um, edible. So if you close all this and just see the FFD deformer and go to the points mode and then you can select everything and you see you can adjust the uh, size of everything in, in this like that and then if you turn everything back on you can get this obviously we are not having enough segments to make it smooth yeah maybe a lot but maybe that's too much and with this uh, geometry setup you can have it to render and then give it a, um, a sky and I'm using the HDRI link from Grayscale Gorilla, but you don't have to do that. You can uh, just uh, type in whatever texture you want to put in as HDRI, or just use light yourself and just light the scene. And yeah, that's basically the uh, the approach that I took to make the render from this project. And yeah, um, I hope you like it. I hope you learned something. Um, in th uh, in this project, though, I chose to go with the uh, with.
twisting or bulging the object from within spline wrap itself and if you want I can upload the project file just so that you can take a look and see what I did uh, uh, but I will go through it here so you can see I changed the size like this so basically uh, kind of small in the beginning and then uh, bigger or uh, thicker like you can't even see it here but maybe if I try yeah it's 2.4 times the original size and then um, smaller at the end again and then I have a spline size which is going from 0 to all the way up and then to 0 so uh, be careful spline size and size is actually different and it can add a lot onto it so um, at this in the size section I have it set at uh, probably a 1 but I have the spline size set to zero so that is why I'm having this extremely tiny point as a start and also for rotation you have spline rotation and just rotation itself and also you have up vector uh, if you know what that is it's basically like the uh, real section I inside spline wrap it basically um, tells the computer where you want this object to be facing and uh, yeah, I think that this is it. Um, hope you like it. Hope you learned something. If you like it, um, feel free to uh, like, hit the like button, and subscribe for more videos if you want. And yeah, thanks for seeing. Bye. This is Z from Z Design. Thank you.